Yo dog, Kenny Boucher here, Next Level Painting. Hitting you up with another painting tutorial, so it's obviously Monday, the best of all days. Got something new for you guys, you may have seen it on my website, it's Necrons. Of course, when I do Necrons, I mean bright, super green, and purples, pinks, and magentas. So of course, I'm going to be hitting you up with a Catacol Command Barge, maybe some more here to come soon. I want to jump right into this one. No more sales pitches, except one thing. We now have a podcast. Please check us out on Libsyn, search for us, or find us here on the Long War. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. Let's do this thing. Painting Necron Catacomb Command Barges. These guys were one of the staples of the Necron Codex for a long time. They had some of the best rules. Obviously, they changed a little bit. They got better in some ways. It got worse in some ways. Regardless, it's still one of the coolest looking Necron models in the line. We're going to start off with, of course, one of my favorite colors of all time, Iosin Green from the Privateer Press line. Love this green. This is one of my base color greens. I always work with this green. I've been in this game a long time, and it's just simply the best. I'm showing you guys here um, a little bit of the nitty gritty process here. Uh, as you can see, my airbrush had just got clogged there. So that's a, I call that the backflow technique where I cover the tip and let it percolate as it, air can't find a way out because I'm covering the tip. Ancient trick. I'm telling you, <laughs> it looks ghetto, but it works. We're going to jump right into Necrotite Green. This is my actual favorite green, even more than Iosin Green. Iosin Green only exists for Necrotite Green to go over it also a privateer press green. One of the, my favorite things about privateer press is they build colors in obvious highlight layers. They call colors a base to a highlight. Iosin green is the base color to Necrotite green. They have many colors that operate that same way. Very easy to use their paints. A uh, little bit difficult to run them through an airbrush, but worth it if you can <laughs> keep your airbrush clear like I just showed you. So we're gonna feather these uh, effects into the tips. Very standard airbrushing techniques, find the points, work your way back in. This has nothing to do with lighting, only has anything to do with coolness. Sometimes I don't pick uh, realistic light sources, I just go with my heart. As I've said a million times before, I'm not a scientist, so sometimes if I overthink where light comes from, it ends up looking wrong anyway. Um, and also, these are Necrons, man. These guys are crazy space robot aliens, man. Like, I feel like the ship is just glowing in these ways. And obviously, here next level painting, I don't just paint one thing. I gotta paint at least two. So here's the other Catacomb Command Barge doing the same effects to it. I'm gonna work with both these ships together throughout this tutorial. Feather that green in, like I said. You wanna use the right amount of water. You want it to look kinda like how whole milk looks as far as consistency. Stand a little bit far away. Use a lot of air. Use a little bit of paint. It's a hard trip to master with a double action airbrush, especially when you crank that PSI up as hard. I mean, you gotta crank that PSI up as hard as your airbrush can handle. You just have to train yourself to use it. It's hard at first, but you can practice on index cards, you can practice on anything which is water even, before you start ruining models. Or pick a model out that you already feel like is ruined from the past and just paint it over and over again and then prime over it. So let's move on to that real quick next step. This is um, my new favorite yellow. This is, Vallejo Air's knockoff of GW's Bad Moon Yellow. It's essentially the airbrush uh, ready version of the yellow. This is the brightest yellow there is. I mixed this yellow in with the Necrotite Green to create a super highlight. I've said this a million times. Don't mix white in with a color to brighten it if you can avoid it. Some colors it's unavoidable. Green, however, is not one of those colors. Always use a yellow, never use a white. White immediately turns into a pastel, muted, just does not look natural. You will look at it and you'll be like, well, technically these blends work, but I don't know why it doesn't look right. It's because it's white, don't use it. So once you've gone in with that 50-50 mix and you feathered those effects in, go with pure yellow. I mean, um, just pop it out on the tips. Don't go, you know, wiping out all the work you just did. Just hit the tips, get it that super electric look like I did just here. Next, it's time to do the thing that all airbrush painters hate, paint brushing. We're gonna mix up Necrotite Green and our Moon Yellow color I just discussed, 
and we're going to edge highlight. I said it, and you know I hate it. This is one of those models that you have to highlight a lot more than I'm happy with. You know, I talk about trying to find ways to not highlight every little edge on a model. Necron models are just kind of built around that, unfortunately, so you have to go in there and just do the work. Highlight 80% of these edges, whereas if it's a Space Marine tank, I would maybe 20% of the edges. So go in there, find those little, I don't know what you want to call them, artworks that I'm sure in the fluff mean electrical servos and connection pieces, but they look just like designs to me. Go on the inside cut of all those little designs with your 50-50 mix of moon yellow and necrotite green. And draw a very thin, precise highlight. Once you do that, all the little tiny designs, we're gonna come in with pure yellow and pop those highlights out in the little 90 degree corners so they have the illusion of like coruscating, like glowing in certain elements while not in others, like it's pulsing. A very easy t trick to learn if you have a steady hand. If you don't have a steady hand, uh, I suggest practicing <laughs> because it's very difficult to do these techniques if your hands are shaky. So let's crank it up here. I'm gonna show you as much of this highlighting process as I can, but I'm definitely gonna show it to you fast because you've already sat through all that in real time. And I wanna show you as much as I can without slow rolling you guys. As you can see, it's coming out really fresh. The airbrushing is very exciting, but these even just these subtle highlights that we're doing on these designs, you see how it's just completely sharpening the model. It's making it look like it's all of a sudden, it went from standard definition to HD, all of a sudden. Uh, and here's another little trick. A lot of people never think about this, but those, those spines uh, that don't really have a hard edge on them, you can go in and you can manufacture your own hard edge with the paintbrush, giving it even more precision, even more sharpness. And you can see how I'm pulling it from both angles. I mean, and look at that design work. I don't even know what to call that. <laughs> I mean, I thought the Space Wolves had fashion accessories, man. These Necrons are out of control with their designs. Like, they can't be anything but designs. They're obviously just for aesthetics and they're robots, so I don't get it. But we just did all that. We have to do all that again on the other side. I mean, that took approximately 1 billion seconds. This is why this is something I'm not a big fan of, <laughs> but you can't be lazy when you get an airbrush. We saved so much time with the airbrush that we have to do this. You, you owe it to yourself. You can't be lazy. You can't make that mistake everyone makes when they buy an airbrush. Oh, look how amazing these transitions looks. It's done. No, you, you did all that in 10 seconds, man. Like the air, that, that part of the airbrushing, it's over. The hard part of airbrushing is learning how to use your airbrush and how to like not get clogs. Once you know how to do that, you save a lot of time on the front end. And you better strengthen those brush skills that you spent 10 years developing. And you better get into it, man. And you, you're going into the trenches on a model like this. Cut. It, it, will, it will literally take it to the next level if you just spend that extra three hours highlighting it with a paintbrush. One of the most difficult things to highlight is anything that is the shape of a circle or an oval. Be slow, be methodical, never rush yourself so hard as you can see i mean i'm getting lucky here and i'm not messing it up and i'm not having to wipe out anything i'm doing here um i'll tell you though it doesn't always happen that way a lot of times i mess it up and go back in there with the airbrush and wipe out some of those highlights and do it again even someone who's been doing this as long as me messes up when it comes to these rounded areas so just be aware they are very difficult it's very easy to do straight lines very difficult to do curves but it's easy if you know the technique. The technique is simple. Slow it down, man. I wish that was all, but obviously there's a lot more to it than just those circles. Now we gotta come in and highlight the handrails because apparently uh, Necron robots uh, need uh, a handrail to not fall off things. We gotta paint all those little transitions and these are a little bit easier because they do have a much you know, longer, straighter surface, but there are some curves to it. Uh, I mean, and I got, I'm gonna, let me just jump right into this, this next stage. Painting the grays. The control panels uh, can be any color you want. The theme of this army and this ongoing commission I've been working on is gray, white, green, purple, magenta. So I've looked for any excuse I can to use my grays. I'm gonna paint these control panels solid gray, and then we're gonna use a wash, and then we're gonna highlight them. Gray is a fun color if you mix a little blue with it because it matches anything. So one of my favorite things about gray is you don't ever have to think about, is this gonna match? Problem solved. 
Yes, it will match. That is painting gray in those little channels. All those little things that we just highlighted, yellow and green. We're gonna have to move in there. We're gonna have to paint those things gray. Um, it wasn't in my initial plans for the model, but the second I painted those control panels gray, I realized I needed to paint these little channels gray too to get that final, you know, color tie in. If you paint them, if you paint a color in a model, you have to repeat it somewhere else. That's also a rule on making things match. Has to be consistent, complementary, and it needs to match. Pretty much, if you if you remember those things, along with generating contrast, you will always be a good painter, regardless of how steady your hand is and how skinny your highlights are, et cetera, et cetera. Here's a final look at the model. I'm pretty happy with it so far. Next week, <laughs> what about the guy riding it? We got so much more to do in this model and thank you for watching this. Thanks for watching that video guys. So fresh te techniques are being laid down. I got some airbrush technique. Uh, it's always fun to use the airbrush in the first part of the project, but then the paintbrushing comes next and there's a lot more details. You gotta be a lot more focused. You know, like I said, don't forget to check out the new podcast, The Long Wars on iTunes. It's on Libsyn. And we're of course on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all the things, uh, you know, and as usual. Thanks for watching players. Thanks for checking out that video. Don't forget. I've got tons of other tutorials in the archives, and I do this every week for free. If you're looking for an ad-free experience, check out thelongward.net. All these videos come out a week early with exclusive access and exclusive downloads and ad-free. Also, check out my best friend Rob Barrett, Spiky Mitts, and of course the Long War YouTube channel for all the freshest battery parts. Thanks for watching.